Okay, I didn't title this one, sorry. This is section 6-2, Relating Transformations and Similarity. You guys remember transformations from a long time ago? Slides, flips, turns. Um, we're sort of mixing everything together today. Let's start out with a few um, definitions, which some might be review. Our first one is a dilation. A dilation is a transformation that preserves angle measures, that means the angle measures don't change, and results in an image with lengths proportional to the pre-image length. So a dilation starts out with something and it makes it bigger, okay? If you talk about angles though, you'd need to start out with something and make it bigger, where the angles would stay the same and the sides would be proportional. Okay, the ratio of the lengths, oh, I'm sorry, pause on that for a second. <laughs> you can also have dilations that um, go from bigger to smaller. You can go small to big and big to small. I shouldn't just assume that we're only talking about one thing, but yes, you can go big to small and small to big. Continuing on, the ratio of the lengths of corresponding sides of the image and the pre-image is called the scale factor. Okay, we've talked about scale factor already, but now we're using scale factor talking about the lengths of corresponding sides of the image and the pre-image, okay? Dilations can also be called similarity transformations, okay? So we're using scale factor with our dilations today. Our first key concept Dilations and similarity. If a dilation can be used to move one figure onto another, the two figures are similar. So if you look here, I have figure A, B, C, and I dilated it starting out from point zero up to X, Y, Z. A, B, C, and X, Y, Z are similar. That means the angles are congruent, the sides are proportional. Okay, we have the pre-image and the image. First example, FEG is similar to triangle FDH. Describe the dilation that moves triangle FEG onto triangle FDH. Love it when the phone happens during a video. Sorry about that. Um, so we are describing the dilation, okay? The figure shows a dilation, and if we look at it, it's a dilation with a center of F. So it sort of dilates out from F. So this is where it starts, okay? The scale factor can be looked at from FH to FG. So we're looking at this from FH to FG. Because if you see right here, it says moves triangle FEG onto triangle FDH. Okay, so we're moving from FH to FG. FH is 20 to FG is 10, which is a ratio of 2 to 1. Okay, let's talk through that again. Now slow down and listen. We can get this. It's different and new. Triangle FEG is similar, so we have FEG is similar to FDH. Describe the dilation that moves FEG onto FDH. So we're going from small to big. Okay, so let's compare FH to FG, because those are the sides that we have. FH is 20, FG is 10, which is how we get our ratio of 2 to 1. Okay? Another key concept, combining dilations and rigid motions. If a dilation followed by any combination of rigid motions can be used to move one figure onto another, the two figures are similar. So let's look at this. We see that ABC is similar to DEF. ABC is similar to DEF. And DEF, there's a typo there, is congruent to GHJ. So we have a dilation and then a reflection. 
So first we dilated and these are similar, then we reflected and they are congruent. Therefore, we know that ABC is similar to GHJ, okay? Because we dilated here and then reflected. These are similar, these are congruent, so these are similar. Another example. Triangle ABC is similar to triangle FGE. Describe a combination of transformations that moves triangle ABC on to triangle FGE. Okay, if we look here, um, ABC, first I need to dilate that to um, ABC dilates down to BDE. Okay, so I'm going to write that down. I have triangle a, B, C, dilates to make triangle A, B, C, D, B, E. Okay? It dilates with a center B. That's important. So triangle ABC dilates to make triangle DBE. ABC dilates to make DBE, and that has it's at center B. This is the common point, so it shrinks down right there. Cool, and that's our first step. Okay, then, oops, need a pen. then triangle DBE is rotated. With center, let's see where it rotates on. It rotates with center F. Nope, center E. If you look, this triangle rotates that way, and here is where it stays. It rotates up. Okay, so it rotates with center E onto triangle. Make sure we get our numbers right. F, G, E. If you see, we named it D, B, E. And if it rotates on E, it rotates up. So we'd have to name it, if we go D, B, E, F, G, E, to make sure we name them in the right order. Okay. And just to close the loop here, the angle of rotation is the same as angle C, because all of these are equal, so that's how far it rotated. Okay? All right, two U-tries. Okay, the two figures are similar. Describe the transformations that move the blue figure onto the red figure, the blue figure onto the red figure. Push pause and try it on your own. Okay, with number one, we have a di dilation with a center B. Okay, so blue to red, that means it starts blue and it goes to red. The, um, describe the transformations, the scale factor, which we need to describe this dilation, is um, we went blue to red, so the blue's on the bottom, and the whole thing, the red plus blue, is on top. So blue to red, we get 14 over 6, which simplifies to 7 over 3. For number 2, we also have a dilation, okay, 9 over 6, which simplifies to 2 thirds. Um, and a reflection. So first it got smaller and then it flipped. Okay, so it squished down and then it flipped. And I'm going to point something out to you right now. Um, if we see blue to red, this got bigger. So our scale factor is going to be a number greater than one. Seven thirds is actually is actually two point three, and two thirds is point six seven. So this one got smaller. 
Okay, number two got smaller, so your scale factor is going to be a number smaller than one. Number one got bigger, so your number is bigger than one. I'm actually going to pause here, um, the video, and break it into two parts because I think that first part ended up being a little bit long.